Good evening. My name is Reggie O'Hare Gibson. And I am Marlon Carey, and together we head the Literary Performance Ensemble Shakespeare to Hip Hop. Artistic performance for us requires collaboration, creative collaboration, whether intentional or unintentional. As any artist will attest, unintentional collaboration is un avoidable. We are constantly in, com in, in uh, dialogue with our predecessors and what that means is that we are always being imprinted by them. What we want to talk about right now, uh, hopefully we can do something about this and demonstrate effectively, are some of the ways and elements and a few results of our successful intentional collaborations. In 2016, Shakespeare to Hip Hop was invited by the Boston Public Library to create a presentation that was surrounding Shakespeare and his influence and impact on culture. Uh, it could not have come at a more fortuitous time. At the time that they approached us, we had already begun work on such a set. So four years ago, when we founded and formed Shakespeare to Hip Hop, uh, we thought that our collaboration would be more like a division of labor, that I, being more interested in the classics, would perform all of the canonical texts. And I, being more active in the hip-hop and pop culture world, would take care of most of the modern and contemporary texts. <laughs> well, it did not quite happen that way. <laughs> no, we quickly found out that for Shakespeare to hip-hop, successful collaboration couldn't be an artistic case of Stephen Jay Gould's non-overlapping magisteria for artists. <laughs> Why? Because artistic collaboration is all about overlap and territorial trespass. And in our collaborative work, we have found a few things that helped us to make A, the act of trespass easier, uh, B, made each of us more knowledgeable, and C, made our collaboration more successful. And those elements, some of us will speak about them this evening, and some of us already have, are compromise, sharing, respect, and trust. Let's start with compromise. For us, as artists, it meant making room for the ideas of another. A basic goal of Shakespeare to Hip Hop is to turn students on and audiences on to performed literature, to let the world know that being literate is hot. <laughs> and both Marlon and I were so passionately committed to every iota of our little precious ideas. <laughs> that we weren't really hearing the ideas of each other. What was needed was compromise, and ready compromise at that. We learned together that the moment we truly allowed ourselves to be flexible was also the moment that we truly began to collaborate. We found ourselves being creative in ways neither one of us would have thought of True, maybe yeah. separately. Uh, and we became, uh, we learned not to think about compromise as a sign of weakness. Rather, it was a sign of being practical and being committed to ultimately accomplishing the shared goal. Now take Shakespeare's Henry V, for example, which features his young cat who becomes the king. His name is Harry. And he's planning to go to war against France. As a leader, of course, he has to compromise with himself. He has to compromise with his noblemen. He also has to compromise with the French princess, Catherine of Valois, who, try, who he tries to woo in his best broken French. When Harry does this, this attempt to speak her language and this thing of valuing her opinion when he, as the conqueror, could just command her, he wins her over and she willingly becomes a partner. She roots for him and helps him to rule more effectively. Compromise can help foster confidence in a final decision because it imbues that decision with more than the power of your own energy, but gives everyone on your team a stake in the outcome. Your team roots for you, and this gives you a confidence uh, that often comes and becomes infectious and is passed on to the members of your team, thus giving you all a kind of collaborative swagger. <laughs> so you want to talk about swagger. Real swagger? Well then you're talking about Henry V, no inebriated stagger. Real swagger. Yeah, you're talking about Henry V. No loud talking bragger. We Real talk it swagger. Swagger. They're talking about Henry V. You want to talk about swagger? Real swagger? Henry V. Oh, for a muse of fire that would ascend the brightest heaven of invention that you may see. Henry V. 
leading his men into battle in France. They are hardcore, and though they have breached the walls of the town of Harfleur, are losing and dispirited until Henry, with sword in hand, comes to them, and this is what he says. Once more unto the breach, dear friends, once more, or close the wall up with our English dead. In peace, there is nothing that so becomes a man as modest stillness and humility. But when the blast of war blows in our ears, then imitate the action of the tiger. Stiffen the sinews, summon up the blood, disguise fair nature with hard-favored rage, then lend the eye a terrible aspect. Let it pry through the portage of the head like the brass cannon. Now set the teeth and stretch the nostrils wide. On, on, you noblest English! Dishonor not your mothers. Attest now that those whom you called father did beget you. Be now copy to men of grosser blood and teach them how to war. The English rally back, get back into the fight, volley and attack. Harflor gives in and Henry tells his men to be lenient with the town citizens. Let this might seem like madness, but clearly there was method in it. Henry just wouldn't give in, he kept pressing on and just wouldn't quit till he won. You wanna talk about swagger? Real swagger. Yeah. Then you talk about Henry V, no loud talking bragger. Real swagger. You gotta talk about Henry V, no inebriated stagger. Real, Real swagger. swagger. You gotta talk about Henry V, you wanna talk about swagger? Real, Real swagger? swagger? Henry V. Now, when I would perform that speech from Henry V, I would do it in its entirety and then contextualize it as a professor might. That is, with lengthy didactic prose. <laughs> what Marlin did was show me a formula of how to take that text and then turn it into a hot 16, which is the basic lyrical unit in hip hop. That is 16 bars or 16 lines of rhyme text, two more lines than we find in a standard sonnet. After that, I abridged the text, placed the professional and professorial prose into hip hop verse, and incorporated it as part of a performance. A definite improvement, in my opinion. And Reggie showed me that my fear of the sonnets was unfounded. In fact, he showed me that I'd actually already been sort of doing it while working on Hot 16s. He advised me to think about sonnets more like Hot 14s. And this <laughs> brings us to our next two elements sharing and respect. Sharing ideas and resources and respect for the other's expertise. Now, as we continued developing our Shakespeare show, which we eventually ended up titling the Shakespeare Time Traveling Speakeasy, we wanted to break up some of the heavier Shakespeare material with some lighter moments. We came up with the idea of having Shakespeare's characters trash talk each other. <laughs> <laughs> I was used to doing battle rhymes in the hip hop world, but I never thought to do it with a fictional character. Reggie, who had been doing persona poems, had never written a battle rhyme. So he shared some of his texts and his research on Shakespeare's characters, and I shared some listening and some viewing material and some of my own works about battle rhymes and smackdowns. We had a good chuckle about the great historical rap battles on the YouTube. Um, but this required us to do research into each other's uh, learning styles, other ways of expression, and that actually forced us to confront some of our own levels of ignorance. Now, we had always respected each other as performers, but now we had to respect each other as craftsmen. We became for each other a teacher. We accepted assignments from one another, gave each other guidance with drafts and revisions, set deadlines, and met them. Well, mostly. Mostly. <laughs> we endeavored to. We learned to adapt to each other's unique circumstances and challenges and ultimately immediately apologize whenever we fell short. And we were friends. Now we have to really re learn how to respect each other as professionals. Uh, that is, we expected each other to show up to meetings on time, prepared to discuss the material. In this way, we began to more clearly see the differences, but more importantly, the similarities between our respective fields. And along the way, we got a few good pieces out of it. So ladies and gentlemen, for your pleasure, we are gonna introduce you to a serious smackdown going on between Lady Macbeth from the play Macbeth, who causes the death of the king, and Iago from Othello, <laughs> who is a dastardly individual who causes the death of his erstwhile friend. Well, if it isn't 
Lady Macbeth, I must confess, I'm quite impressed with you, yes, but if you had more speaking lines. <laughs> Sorry, that wasn't under my breath. What's this? I think you missed the spot. You should have worn gloves. You've got the heart of a raven with the face of a dove. Alas, poor Lord Macbeth, he sure did pick a winner. Remind me never to accept your invitation for dinner. <laughs> Invited dude to dine and put his death on the menu. No lawyer in his right mind would ever defend you. And let me go a little deeper while the cat's out of the bag. You could have been one of the witches on the heath. You are one crazy hag. <laughs> Lady Macbeth, I regret that you're not going to get this championship. I'll sink that battleship. Your mind slipped while you slept, sleepwalker. The dark side is strong with this one. You are an inexcusable executioner of innocent victims. Oh, no, he didn't. <laughs> I call upon the divas, both past and future. Beyonce, rain upon me a divine lemonade. Come, you spirits who tend on mortal thoughts. There's a knave in my face, and I like it not. <laughs> For I am vexed by the essence that his presence has brought. Please send me a cleanser to rout out this here spot. I am not your wife Amelia, Juliet, or Cordelia. I'm a real woman, son of man, so I ain't fearing you. Yes, I know where to get a dagger, and I got that diva swagger like Athena. And I can see you've never seen or had to deal with a woman of will who will get in your grill and spill all over you the way she truly feels. And that is, you make me ill, you <laughs> motiveless malignant menace. I'm the queen of Scotland while you're the something that's rotten in Venice. Whining, <laughs> whining and crying about not being promoted and over a thousand lines, your vocabulary is bloated. It should be noted, yes, I only get 259. That's because men waste words and time while real women use our minds. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, the last quality we wish to demonstrate is trust. Got to trust your partner, that your partner will do their part to make the magic happen. Remember, there are reasons you've decided to work together, to collaborate with one another. Trust that. Trust that something in you needed for you to come together and lead one another to new discoveries new approaches, new connections. It's funny that we should talk about trust as this last thing, as this last item, because this last performance we're gonna give you happens to be from Hamlet, a play about a young man who found he couldn't trust anybody, including his mama. Mm -hmm. Hamlet's father died, it was most peculiar. His uncle Claudius became the new ruler. He married Gertrude, who was Hamlet's mama. Do marry his sister-in-law. Ain't that some drama? <laughs> Hamlet's hating on it. Daddy's not even cold, but some guards on duty said they seen a ghost. Ham goes to check it, and yup, it's his daddy. And what the ghost says starts to drive him batty. His pop says, Claudius iced me, no doubt. You know what to do, son. You gotta ride out. Subplot. Ophelia's bro said, Hamlet's just a flirt. She dies at the end. That's a spoiler alert, but... <laughs> Moving right along, here comes Fort and Rise, so a young lad who came to get revenge for the past. A long time ago, somebody killed his big papa. He came thugged out to do the thing proper. Go ham. Go ham. Go ham. Let. Go ham. Let. Go ham. Go ham. Go ham. Let. Go ham. Let. So Fort and Rise come, he's like, Hamlet, let's fight. And Hamlet's like, yo, I got a much bigger plight. I'm trying to get the mic to kill my uncle with a knife or poison him or push him off a cliff to end his life. Gertrude's higher than a kite, thinking everything's all right. Yeah. Well, Hamlet's seeing visions in his plague with sleepless nights, but he still thinks the ghost might well be the devil. I'll stay to play to see if he's on the level. They reenact the murder, Claudius leaves the room. Now Hamlet's sure it's time to steal his uncle's doom. Hamlet goes ham like Jean-Claude Van Damme. Stash Polonius, Ophelia's dad, like, oh man. Laertes, the bro, comes back to get vengeance. Teams up with Claudius to end Ham's existence. Mom drinks the poison. He's a toast to my son. Hamlet kills Claudius finally, then he dies. The play's done. <laughs> go Ham. Go Ham. Go Ham. Let. Go Ham. Let. Go Ham. Go Ham. Go Ham. Let. Go Ham. Let.
Now, every time we do that piece, I have to trust that Reggie's going to come in at the right moment on the right tempo. Otherwise, the piece loses a bit of its magic. Yes, Merlin trusts that if he throws me the tomato, I'll catch it. And we both depend upon our audience, you, to do the same thing. We trust that if we've done our part, you will feel a part of the performance and pick up on the cue to talk back to us. We trusted that if we called, you would respond. And you did. A successful collaboration and performance is not unlike what happens in successful congregations. The magic happening, in order to make the magic happen, requires that all of us bring our creative energies and place them in service to a collaborative or covenantal vision of the heart and spirit. And if we compromise with, share with, show respect for and trust in one another, we can make that shared vision a reality. Shakespeare to hip hop, thank you very much. Oh.